Hi everyone, just thought I'd do a really quick video for you to show you my first impressions and thoughts about the performance of Solar Edge. I have a Solar Edge SE2000, 2 kilowatt inverter there, connected to 2.4 kilowatts of solar panels. My Solus inverter there is a 3.6 kilowatt inverter, and it's got 3.9 kilowatts of solar panels attached to it. But uh, the performance, the optimization, you know, that's what we're interested in. Uh, how good is Solar Edge? During the day for the first week of installation, I've been checking on the panel here to see what uh, rates of kilowatts we're actually getting. And then here on the generation meter, there's actually a measure of power also for my Solar Edge inverter because there's no panel on here. I can't actually see what the instantaneous power is on this inverter. So thankfully I can via this here. So what I've been doing is just checking between the two and seeing uh, how they compare. According to the um, power differential between the inverters, the 2 kilowatt inverter versus 3.6 kilowatt inverter, that's a 55% uh, difference. So this is 55% of the size of this. If I compare the actual panels connected to the two inverters, then 3.9 kilowatts versus 2.4 kilowatts, we're talking 61%. So 61% max power should be coming through there. Worst case scenario, based on clipping at both ends, 55%. So what are we actually getting? And this will amaze you, I think. Okay, so this is my Solis inverter currently. Let's just make sure we've got a nice uh, period of time where it's going to display it because it keeps rotating. And there you can see 1160, 1180. It fluctuates, 1140. It's fluctuating a fair amount. And there we go, 1194, 1200. So if I quickly nip down here and have a look at what the solar edge is producing, 1232. But it's not fluctuating anywhere near as much. It's, if I can just get a nice steady view of it, it's nice and steady in its power output. But 1230. And up here still, 1200. So the amazing thing is, uh, the Solis inverter with 3.9 kilowatts of solar panels is not producing as much electricity as the Solar Edge with only 2.4 kilowatts. How is that possible? And that can only be optimization. Um, what other issues have I got potentially um, impacting that? Well, they're, they're scaffolding up. So is one of the scaffolding panels, poles um, covering some of the panels? Um, it is between 8.45 and 9.30 in the morning, um, mid-September. So the sun is very low to my left-hand side. The panels are completely south-facing. So with the sun rising, it's, it's uninterrupted. There's no shading from trees. Um, it's an uninterrupted countryside view, and the sun is well up. Here on the, where's my finger? The solar edge, they're in pairs of two panels. So every two panels has its own power rating and it's optimized independently. So if some are really bright and some are shaded, then uh, you are getting that optimized and you're getting the peak power of the ones that are bright. Whereas on the Solus, you don't actually get that. My observations so far are that first thing in the morning when the Solus is only producing, say, 30, 60 watts of electricity, uh, the solar edge is producing nothing. So in very dull light, um, it's not doing as well. I noticed that yesterday we had a very cloudy day. It was very dark gray, raining a lot of the day. And basically the percentage of the solar edge was down to 50 to 55%. So it wasn't performing very well at all. But on sunny days, it seems to outperform those percentages of 55 and 61%. And on average, I'm getting high 60s. But there are points in time of the day, as I was just explaining now, when the sun's first coming up and we're getting some nice bright sunshine at a low shallow angle, the solar edge is outperforming the solace. And that's what I'm finding incredible. So I've had quite a few um, questions about my configuration and it's some of the obvious things. You know, how on earth do you connect two arrays, two inverters uh, onto a single system? And yeah, when I was thinking about adding a second array, you know, those were the same questions that I was considering. So let me talk you through the configuration as I understand it, as a lay person, not as a qualified electrician. So these, these black cables here, they're the power cables that are coming from the solar panels, so you can see those coming from the roof. And uh, the ones in the flexible cable there, they are the ones that go to the solar edge inverter. So if we follow the line, you can see it comes across and goes up and under into the solar edge, up here somewhere. And then the uh, power cables here 
wherever we are, there, there, there for all the uh, existing array that goes down into the conduit and then up out of the conduit and into the Solis inverter. So the power cables from the panels go into a separate inverter. From the solar edge inverter, I come down to this box, which is a lovely, neat combination of an isolation switch, a generation meter, so I'm independently tracking the generation from those panels, and uh, obviously the RCBO. Over here, uh, the Eon installation for the Solis inverter, I've got a much larger uh, generation meter, much larger isolation switch, and then the RCBO is in here. So uh, the installation that I've just had with the Solar Ridge combines this item, this item, and this item all into one very nice, neat package. But because of the way my garage and electrics is laid out, the output power from the Solar Ridge can come along the same conduit as the Solace, up into the same box here, using a separate breaker, completely isolated, but then joining the mains up here on the same physical cable. And yet, yeah, just above there, you can see the CT clip for my Zappy charger. So that's how I'm reading a single number for the combined power generation of both inverters, just on the CT clip of the meter side of the configuration. So the importance um, for this installation is that this generation meter is what's controlling and giving meter readings for my fit application. So I can't change that and I can't change any of the panels and any of the configuration that comes in through here into the Solis inverter. But I can add a completely separate inverter here to completely separate panels that come down completely separate power, completely separately isolated uh, and a separate generation meter. And that's uh, how it works, how it's connected. And yes, the Eddy device is down here as well, all nicely, neatly cabled in. What else can I tell you on the Solar Edge inverter? This is the extended version, not the basic version. So I have an aerial and I have a comms board inside, and that gives me some data analysis. On the Solace side, I have a uh, data stick here, again, Wi Fi, and that's sending the data through to my broadband router and then out to China so I can view it online. So there you go, there's my configuration, there's the system, and uh, the performance I'm currently getting, quite good. I am very, very impressed with Solar Edge. So I hope that was okay as an impromptu video just to explain the configuration, but I wanted to share with you the performance of the Solar Edge inverter. That really was quite a shock that at particular times of the day it can outperform a much larger la, la, blah, 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 blah. It can outperform a much larger configuration. As always, thanks for watching everyone. Thanks for subscribing. Take care and see you again soon. Bye bye.